Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Video True Dad, and welcome back to Fallout 2, where you join us here inside the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, which turns out to be a lot bigger than I was expecting, and also a lot more interesting. Between this part and last part, I've had a chance to look this up online, and uh, yeah, this is a fascinating area. So, originally, this was supposed to be like one of the biggest dungeons in Fallout 2. And even though the work in this area was never completed, over time comprehensive plans did start to emerge about it. Right down to flowcharts showing how the different floors would fit together, how many areas they should be and what threats and NPCs should be included. So in fact it was quite manageable for a restoration patch to take all that information and come up with a really solid approximation of what the EPA would have ended up looking like, which is really, really fascinating. But even more interestingly, loads of the ideas that never actually made it into the release version of Fallout 2, because, you know, this wasn't actually in the final game, were recycled into New Vegas, specifically Old World Blues. So, we should probably keep an eye out for that sort of thing too. Anyway, first up today, yeah, lifts. We've got a whole bunch of lifts, so hang on, I think I'm on three right now. Yeah, I'm already on three. There's a three right there. So there are three different levels I can go and visit and two lifts I can use to get to them, so uh, therefore, yes, yeah, some areas might be like cut in half. So, uh, alright, let's see what we flippin' got going on here then. So I've entered the EPA sub-levels, and aha, they're colour-coded. Right, we saw the colours being mentioned up top. Now I believe red was mentioned as... that was like security, so okay, this is going to be a fun starting point. And straight away, hello, by any chance are you... Holograms! So obviously we find holograms in New Vegas, in both Dead Money and in Old World Blues. But yeah, originally they were going to be shown up here for the first time. Though yeah, it uses the same visual effect as the ghost back in the den, so that's cool as well. Right, the question is, are we actually like, you know, cut in half or anything? Ooh, hello! There's a cool little museum up here, very nice. Yeah, there's definitely a door linking these two areas, so I'm not actually needing to use, yeah, the right lift though. Oh. Some of these are actually awake. Yes, I'm not sure whether that's actually, you know, a problem or not. Maybe for the time being they're totally chill and whatever, but can't help but be a little bit on the concern side. Still, I have brought plenty of friends with me, so if it does become a problem, we should be A-OK. -okay. And even better, yeah, we've got a reminder here what's going on. So we're definitely in red right now because I can literally see the red. Security department, small but informative museum. Also, don't forget to purchase snacks and stop by the public execution chamber. Maybe unsuitable for small children. Marvellous. So, okay, we now know what's going on here. Security and... Where's that public execution chamber they mentioned? Ah, that'll be it right there then. Gotcha. Okay, let's start off looking for, like, you know, the control room and whatever. And also figuring out what the state of play is with these robots. Because if this is security, it feels like, yeah, there might be problems here. And hello! You guys all chill with me? Yeah, you guys seem chill with me. Right, let's go and have a word with the hologram. See if we can get any sense out of that. And, okay, unauthorised access requested, locking door. Okay, when you say locking door, can I resolve that by unlocking the door? No, there is no lock for me to pick. So, this might theoretically be something about, yeah, having the right key card or possibly just finding another way around. Right, there's a little bedroom right here full of little foot lockers and lockers or whatever. Might be able to find... Uh, no, still nothing. Okay, this area might be difficult to get through. I might need to come back later when I find the right security card. By the way, are me and you cool with each other? Yeah, we're cool with each other. Let's try some more doors, or is every single door a no-go? No, every single door is a bit of a no-go right now. This looks promising, though. Even more lockers over here. I just need one door I can open, which I'm guessing might theoretically... No, still nothing here. Unauthorized, locked. Keep on keeping on. There's got to be a way to get somewhere because... Didn't we open a door a second ago? I swear we opened a door a second ago just to get into this area. Possibly this door over here was already open. I'm not 100% sure. Right, well, I was definitely able to get somewhere at the bare minimum. And aha. So the public viewing wing of the execution chamber, that's open to me. And there's a terminal here as well. Okay, anything I can do with this? Like, you know, taking a lockdown off or something. Empower the electric chair. 
Okay, please do empower it. Please encourage the person to move as close to the chair as possible from either side. Thank you. Empowered electric chair, move person. Okay, fine, interesting. What else can we do here? That's a window. Unbreakable glass, don't even try. What about this glass? Okay, so I can't blast my way through either. In theory, enough explosives should be able to knock down a door, but yeah. I feel like what we need here is uh, some form of key card, though. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What's that? Retinal scanner. Okay, probably don't want to get my retina scanned because my retina's probably the wrong retina. Okay, for now, let's move on. We might need to come back here later with... Uh, an eyeball or a key card or something we can use. So, okay, yeah, we're on four right now. Down over to five. And this is uh, one of the two purple floors. But I swear there's like two different purple floors. So, because, yeah, it's the seven colours of the rainbow that actually make up the floor titles. So, is this indigo or violet? At a glance, I'm not sure whether that's indigo or violet. If it's indigo, it should be top secret research. If it's violet, then it should be memory core for storage of data, so some form of central hard drive. And also, yeah, connection to sub-level yellow contains more interesting things, like the pharmacist of the future, Mr. Kemi. So, if there's a massive database, then look for a way to get through to yellow. And yeah, at least some doors are opening. Okay, this floor seems to be going better already, and... Uh, Okay, that would suggest that this is whatever the second one was. Violet, I think, because that looks like a giant data core to me. Like, you know, a giant Zax machine. Suggesting, aha, that'll be down to yellow in that case. Fine, so that's what we're doing in here. And there's also maybe slightly concerning, yeah, second Zax over here. And what looks like, yeah, the sort of growth the master was producing. And giant piles of smoky red chemicals. Ooh, Okay, there's also computers and more holograms. Right, if we can cut through there, that would probably be lovely. Let's start off if we can, because let's get ahead of ourselves here. Probably most of these doors are going to be locked again until we found the right key card. No, we're doing better already. Let's see if that Zax machine wants to have a chat. No, nothing we can do there. But on the other hand, that generator seems to be deactivated. Any chance we could work on this? This generator is for the holograms. Do not tamper with it. Okay, potentially therefore it is working in some capacity because we saw a hologram being on already. So, okay. Ah, the Zax machine did just say something. It was singing Daisy Bell. So, okay. We know therefore this thing is on. I just can't communicate with it. Well, that's absolutely A-OK. -okay. We can go and visit, yeah, the yellow in a second. Remember that on the way out. For the time being, let's go meet our first hologram we can actually get to. Assuming these areas aren't all blocked off again. But yeah, here we go. Lockers! Everybody likes lockers. Admittedly, I like lockers more when they've actually got something in them. Possibly one of the consequences of this area never being finished is there won't actually be loot here. Because the loot that was going to go in this area was reassigned elsewhere. So it's possible we might come away from this place a little empty-handed. But we will have gained the gift of knowledge. And that there is the most important thing of all. Plus a stim pack in this desk. Stim packs are good too. Oh, uh-oh. Right, okay. There's actually poison gas in the air. Foul smell in the air makes my lungs burn in pain. And, uh, okay. Ah, apparently you're Mr. Kemi. I was expecting, you know, some form of Mr. Handy, but okay. What do you do? I make drugs. All kind of drugs. When life gets you down, Mr. Kemi's here to pick you up. How does Mr. Kemi work? It's simple. All you need is some scientific know-how and the right ingredients and leave the rest up to me. Go on, give me a try. And kids, remember to ask mummy or daddy for permission before playing with Mr. Kemi. Right, okay. This seems simple enough. Also, am I dying right now? I might be dying right now, but I'll see what I can actually create. So, all right, various bits and pieces. And more options. Uh, do I actually need any of these right now? What would I actually need if I wanted to... Maybe I should just get out of here. Yeah, I don't need drugs. I've got plenty of drugs. We just need to get through this area as fast as possible. I want to say as fast as possible. Where's the door out of this area? I'm not sure there's... Hang on. Where is the door? Oh. Wait. I'm wearing power armor. And so's Vic. Sulik, how are you doing? Because... I officially do actually potentially have, you know, proper protection 
against bad things in the air because I went into the mine. Now, normally, yeah, your companions without protection would be screwed over, but possibly, yeah, the whole thing wasn't programmed fully yet because, as I say, work in progress never actually finished. So, we might be okay, actually. Ooh, no one's dying, but I do have myself, hang on, some big old books and whatever. Big book of science. Am I already over 100 science? I might not actually be able to use those, but... I'll take them with me because they are quite valuable. So uh, let's just keep searching on here. We might be able to find some books. Good, good. Not every single reward was moved elsewhere. And some drugs too in particular. Mentats, which is very important to me because I actually need mentats every time I need to leave a companion behind for any reason. Right, just in theory, Mr. Kemi, if I wanted to make a basic stim pack, what would that actually take? Please feed me one brock flower, one xander root, and one empty hypodermic needle. Right, so basically you're just going to make healing powder, mush it into a paste, then shove it into a needle. Yes, I've decided to start ignoring this machine. And here we go, there is a door over here, it's just a bit hard to see in the gloom. So, uh, crack open this door, we can make it to the other side of... Ah! Hang on, this is technically yellow already, because of, yeah, the coloration on the floor. So, uh, not sure where that little ladder I saw goes, but possibly a shortcut to somewhere else. Right, Mr. Hologram, what do we need from you? And also, that computer does appear to be saying boop very loudly. Possibly it's trying to indicate I should speak to that computer too. Right, we'll have a word with both of you in a second. Okay, the hologram is speaking at me in binary, which I do not speak. And it's continuing to speak at me in binary. How about this terminal over here? See what we can do, because you are loudly trying to draw attention to yourself. Marvellous. So, EPA robot control computer, what do you wish to do? Okay, run a basic diagnostics check. So, uh, section four, loose wiring. That seems like a simple repair job to me. So, uh, have I got this already? Too difficult to repair this. Go ahead and try. Um, okay, Vic, how about you actually, you know, do the thing you're supposed to do, which is when I can't repair things, like you repair them. Ah! He couldn't, he couldn't get to it, but now he can. So, uh, that computer's now been fixed. 500 XP from a trouble too. Right, let's try again. Admittedly, right now the robots are being nice and passive, which is good, and... Uh, welcome to the EPA robot control computer. You no longer have security authorization to use these files. Terminating sequence. Is this another one of those scenarios where I've just basically screwed myself over? Because it might be, you know... Yeah, now I fixed the machine, it won't cooperate anymore when it was cooperating before, so possibly slightly screwed myself over there. And nothing from that machine. Right, try the hologram again on the way out. No, same business again, unfortunately. Right, so let's just double check the robots haven't turned on me. I haven't totally screwed myself over, right? Hello over there. You know I'm not supposed to be here, but you seem pretty chill with me anyway. Marvellous. Right, so... In which case, let's actually nip back over to, uh, yeah, that lovely little ladder, see what's going on there. And on the way past, actually, while I think about it, check in on section yellow on the terminal, because uh, that might actually give me, yeah, some clues as to what that hologram's supposed to actually be or do. So, uh, yellow, power supply room, fine, that's absolutely A-OK, -okay. and also Mr. Kemi. Nothing major, and also, yeah, hazardous chemicals. We know about the noxious gas already. I seem to be fine, and so are all my companions. But yeah, we need some way of removing the lockdown, so I can actually access everything in Sector Red. So, you can't get there. I blatantly can get there, hang on. Ooh, incorrect password, locking system. Okay, so I actually can't get in here. Can I unlock it as there are officially no... There's no lock here. Right, okay, so I can't access that area for now. I need a password together with something that gives me authorization on level red. Okay, we've done pretty well in violet and yellow. Let's head down to level six and see what's going on there. So bottom floor, this seems to be green. Kill, feed, hungry, etc. Right, so we've got ourselves cannibals in a zoo. I see, marvellous. Together with a rather nice garden, it must be said. Very nice and green. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Less nice garden. Even less nice garden because, yes, full of monsters that want to eat me. Good, good, good. Is there anything I can pick up? No, that's nothing I can pick up. 
And presumably control room. Right, let's just double check what's going on here with green. An exciting level containing an arboretum, biological weapons research, fascinating new creatures, and every child's favourite, our unique petting zoo. Marvellous. So that means I'm missing... Was orange the area I already went through? No, I don't seem to have actually been through orange. I haven't seen any of that yet, so... Actually, wait, hang on. No, the first one was definitely red, not orange. Unless, of course, it was orange and red. Because some floors do seem to need to share. Though that does mean we definitely haven't seen blue, which is the secret one. Which is presumably, therefore, what's down the ladder. I need to find myself the password to access the secret non-existent blue. Right, let's start off here with what looks closest to a control room of some description. Might be able to do something with these here terminals. So... Okay, here we go. Botany terminal. Let's have, yeah, information database first up. So, uh, crop rotation or botany? Let's start off with botany. That sounds more interesting. Botany is the scientific study of plant life. Yes, I know. I didn't actually want a definition. I wanted something useful. The data seems to be various charts, graphs, and pictures of cross sections of plants. Okay, and something about crop rotation. Yep, good way of avoiding a decrease in soil fertility by just allowing certain fields to be fallow for a certain period of time. Marvellous. Right, just a bit of flavour there, nothing too major. So, uh, seed storage. Okay, there are seeds remaining in storage tanks 1 and 2. Access tank 1. So, storage tank 1 reports 5 remaining packets from the US Food Enhancement Program. Seeds from corn plants which are genetically modified to be immune to disease and insect infestation. Well, this certainly does sound rather useful to Arroyo, or rather, you know, it would have been had they not already been kidnapped. But, you know, potentially for when we rescue them, this could actually be quite good. So they've been moved and put in the collection container, wherever that is precisely. And tank two is uh, two remaining seed packets, each of similar or different families. No research has been conducted. The outcome of seed germination is unknown. Right, leave those. That could be bad in that case. Let's just take the good ones. We actually know what they are. And there we go. Those are actually in my inventory now. But um, possibly they're... Yeah, they're quite heavy. They're five pounds each. So that's quite a lot. Right, let's actually burn some weight here by reading about first aid and reading about repairing things. And if I'm allowed to, reading about science. I am indeed allowed to read about science. Marvellous. Though, ah... No, I'm not. I learned nothing new there. Right, hang on. Did I learn anything new? I may or may not have learned anything new. I learned something new from at least a couple of them. Right, those have been handed over to Marcus. So at this point, let's go and visit some people and plants and whatnot. And uh, yellow force fields normally mean... Uh-oh. Right. Confirm code. I don't know what the code is, so I'm not going to enter anything. It's electronically locked. Okay, well that's fine, because I've got an electronic lockpick. So, really, I should be able to bypass this, right? That logically makes sense. So, that does nothing. I feel like the electronic lockpick should work on the door with the electronic lock, but whatever. Right, I have no evidence upon which to, yeah, make any guesses about the code right now. So, uh, keep on exploring for the time being and... Okay, that looked like it was flashing a bit of an alarm for a second there, but it seems to be fine in the end. In we go, and hopefully this isn't a terrifying trap of some description. No, nothing I can interact with at all. Just a very nice place to visit. Now, can I actually just sneak round the back of that little alert? No, door the other side saying the same thing. So, okay, how do we open the door? I'm going to say it's not the top option, it's... Actually, the door could be open. That could be like, you know, someone saying their password as password. The open code could be open. And locking door. Right, please contact head of PR. Okay, so that hasn't worked very well. Aside from confirm override code. Right, now I need an override code before I can get through these doors. But in all fairness, there's nothing here aside from cannibals and... Ooh, hello! Some Wanamingos in a cave over there. Right, that might be a way to sneak through to something else. Okay, we need to go and find the head of PR somewhere. And here's interesting, actually. This place, where's the elevator that's on the other side? Right, the other elevator might go to slightly different places. 
All right, back over to this floor. Everybody, go and check out this elevator. See if that brings us anywhere else. Here we go. This one says there's a six, but I'm not sure what that would actually correspond to because I swear there wasn't... Aha! This will be either indigo or violets. Gotcha. So this does bring me to a different place, but I still need to actually find... Uh, yeah, somewhere that's actually got itself the head of PR for the override code. Though, uh, this looks good. That looks like a very large pile of computers. Yes! Oh dear, it's another door that needs a code. Right, it's probably not open. We tried that one. Let's try this code. And uh, dear, oh dear. Once again, no. Possibly you can't guess it right. Possibly you need to actually find the right data. So the head of PR is going to be dead. But there are holograms dotted about in theory. Just in theory... I might be able to get some sense out of a hologram if I could find a good quality hologram that's actually not speaking in binary. Okay, some of these doors are open at the bare minimum. This looks good. This is another control room looking room over here. Geiger counter in this box. That doesn't actually help me that much. So, all right, keep on moving. Some of these doors are open. And here we go, something that very much made it into Old World Blues. I just went to investigate this desk and the toaster on top of it just started speaking to me. So, I'm the brave little toaster, your chirpy breakfast companion. Right, so between this and New Vegas, they very much decided on a new direction for what personality a toaster should have. Got it. Did you know it's been well over a century since I last had the pleasure of making toast for someone? You're the first toast consumer to come through here since the war. And here's the real kicker. Were you to actually request toast, I'm not even sure I'd be up to the task. You see, I'm feeling a little under the weather inside. It's rather embarrassing, really. Right, can I repair you, potentially? Right, attempt to repair. You go ahead. There we go. I've repaired the toaster for 750 XP. Hello there, Mr. Toaster. Let's have a chat with you, see if you're nice and grateful for that. Hey, you fixed me. I knew that Mr. Handy left the job unfinished. Now I feel better than ever. Thanks. Marvellous. It's what I do. And uh, if you want me to reward you with toast, at least allow me to give you a little tip. You know those slot machines you find in casinos? Well, I calculated a method that can jinx the machines out of their cash. I have an IQ of 6,000, you know. When I'm not making toast, I like to ponder these kinds of things. For helping me out, I'll tell you the secret codes. Just use one of the machines like you normally would. And uh, there we go. So now I know something about getting a good amount of cash out of a slot machine. Marvellous. Right, keep speaking to him. See if we can get anything else out of him yet. And uh, now I'm fully functional again. I can make toast better than ever. Do you want any toast now? Why can't I say yes? Well, probably because I've got no bread. Hang on, check the fridges. Maybe there's bread in the fridges. Maybe I can actually make toast. No, sadly, that's just beer. Right, nothing in these here lockers. And uh, yeah, I can't make it up to this area or these giant tanks, whatever they're for precisely, until I've got the actual password to get past any of these here doors. Actually, hang on, is that true? Can I actually make it round to... Uh, that door. Sometimes, yeah, it's easy to miss a door when the isometric view kind of screws you over. Can I make it in here or did I already check this door? No, I can't make it in here. There's just literally no point. Now, there is a terrifying flashing red nuclear waste room. I'm not 100% sure why I want to come into it, but I do have the option of doing so. And I'm getting no warnings and I do have Wellington boots inside my inventory. So, okay. What can I actually do with any of this because it seems to be a giant pile of sludge without much point in existing and yeah this must be indigo so therefore this is top secret research gotcha so i'm still a bit lacking in uh, yeah any form of uh, eyeball security key card any of that good stuff except hang on hang on hang on hang on i had some eyeballs i totally had some eyeballs where did i actually put my eyeballs after i was done with the sierra army depot because I'm pretty sure I did have some eyeballs as a result of visiting that place. Oh, hang on. I've just come down to level 4 in elevator 2, and this isn't red. This is orange, but hang on. Red had two... Uh, red had two elevators. Right, hang on. I've discovered another room. Wait, 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 wait. Right, there might be way more than this than I was expecting. Also, those are rad wasps, which I never want to see again in my life. So, hang on. We'll come back here in a second. 
Okay, so three we know where that is. Uh, five, that is... Yeah, that's definitely the far side of yellow and violet. Four's where I am right now. And six is down to indigo. Right, so we're only missing blue as a colour. Now we know uh, this is where orange is. And orange was... Uh, ooh, nice big stage. And uh, holograms uh, who are actually willing to speak. They're not just speaking in binary. Marvellous. So, okay. Someone in power armour who's very, very angry indeed. And uh, someone in green who appears to be, I don't know, a janitor or something. Someone in blue who doesn't want to actually blow anything up. Yeah, more about keeping the grounds clean. Gotcha. And beige up top who doesn't want to commit to anything whatsoever. So a bunch of holograms just standing in a room arguing but by any chance are any of these individuals going to be a representation of the head of PR because that's who I need to speak to actually yes right let's start off with the cafe because it happens to be right next to where I'm starting the robots are still fine with each other the doors are actually opening in this place so that's nice too why have I got the plasma rifle out by the way I shouldn't have the plasma rifle out that's definitely overkill when nothing's attacking me whatsoever oh flip it's another cookie right okay take the cookie the cookie's important don't eat the cookie, save the cookie for like the final boss fight or something because could actually be quite useful there. Oh flip, it's a second cookie. Right, into the room of death please, everybody into the room of death and uh, yes indeed, the rad wasps are now coming in this direction, that's just flipping marvellous. So that is, uh, no it's a fruit fly. Looks a lot more terrifying than that to me but okay fine whatever. 95%, congratulations. There we go, that's better. So 23, hang on, how much health does it have? Oh, it's only got 30 hit points, that's not a problem. This seems like a good enough spot for me to just start taking a handful of shots at you, though uh, there might be something on the... No, for some reason your shadows are also being highlighted as enemies. Marvellous, I see what's going on there. Well, it looks like they should have a chance of spawning something because, uh, yeah, they've actually got a little hand icon on them, but as far as I can tell... None of these guys actually did. So, uh, alright. Anything in here? Hold down shift just to see if anything's highlighted. Uh, doesn't look like it, but maybe come back here later. Not sure. Right, in which case, yeah, that's all we can do aside from heading down this corridor towards the hologram. So, uh, let's see what you guys have got to say for yourself. Though, actually, hang on. How do I get into... No, wait. Wait, 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 wait. There's a door right there. Check the terminals before we go and speak to the holograms because uh, I'd like to, you know, learn something about the holograms before we try and engage them in discussion. Here we go. We got ourselves another computer. So, uh, diagnostic check, please. Uh, so initiating, compiling. Uh, thank you for being patient. Data storage running at 84% efficiency. A wiring fault on this computer's mainframe is causing magnetic coils to run to high power. Resulting magnetic field could cause interference with other devices if not fixed. Right. Well, that I can probably fix for you. There we go. 100 XP. Problem solved. You are very welcome, computer. Now running at 100% efficiency. Thank you. Have a nice day. Right. Let's see what's going on with the holograms. Because it doesn't seem like there's anything else I can do aside from... Well, I can loop around the back of them. And by the way, I actually literally have to. Because, yeah, there's no way in that way. So let's actually, yeah, just explore literally everything else first. And aha. Maybe this was like a bunker where someone important was going to give a speech in the post-apocalypse, but they never made it here in time. Something like that. But yet more doors. Right, let's try the code wheat. And once again, not correct. Right, need that PR code to open these bloody doors. Let's go chat to the holograms. One of you better be the head of PR. Now, I'm guessing it's not the person in power armor, so uh, let's start off with you. If we can. And a high-tech computer using... No, not the computer. Speak to the flipping hologram. Hello, welcome to the EPA. You may have noticed that we're experiencing some mild issues. We'll cross that bridge once we come to it. Okay, who are you? Director of Operations. Fine. I need to go find myself a director of PR. I'm guessing you over there are head of security. So uh, let's try these two. So welcome to the EPA. How may I help you? Lunch will be served in the cafeteria at midday for all company employees. Right, so uh, but any chance you head of HR and uh, 
Director of Public Relations, yes. Right, so 40011 is Director of PR. Marvellous. You, I actually need to get on site and, uh, right, maybe you could help me with something. Yes, yes, I'd love you to help me with things. There's some doors around the complex I can't open without speaking a password. I'd like to get through them. Go on, tell me the password. Of course I know the password, but unfortunately I'm unable to share it with you. I understand your enthusiasm for wanting to experience all that this great facility has to offer, but there are rules we must follow for your own safety. Remember everyone, we offer guided tours of our complex at predetermined times. Okay, by any chance can I talk you round in any way? So, if I give you the password, then not only could I be endangering you, I'd also be endangering the complex. Children, please do not taunt the holograms. Okay, how can I endanger the complex? Hate to break it to you, lady, but this complex has already gone to hell and back. There's nothing here but hazardous chemicals and broken robots. So, I don't know. I'd be defying protocol, but perhaps if you could assist me with something. Ooh, have you got a quest for me? Very, very nice indeed. Do you think you could fix the lighting? It's improper for me to conduct tours through such a dimly lit complex. If you could brighten this place up for me, I'll give you the password. Right, okay, so that normally means just find generators, use the repair skill on them. Alright, let's see what we can do here, though actually while we're passing by, speak to the others, they also might have a few things for me to do. So Head of Grounds wants me to take out all of the plants, but I think I might have already done that actually, so that one might actually be done already. Let's check in with him immediately, because uh, I swear that's done, have you completed the task for me? I thought I had, but maybe I missed one. Right. And as for you, Head of Security, no, I'm speaking to Vic right now. You the one that brought the robot control computer back online. Yes, I think that was me. And excellent, brilliant, I can crush those fools now. The EPA will be cleansed once more. All right, now I have something for you. Speaking to all the robots, get your metal ass in gear and come give this civvy a reward for serving this great nation. Right, a robot wheels over to you and holds out a key card. Once you take the card, you watch it wheel back out of the room. Somehow you get the impression these robots would have been happier if you'd left them inactive. Be on your way now, you're dismissed. Okay, so I've done your quest already and got myself some form of key card. Now, that would make me think that, yeah, the red areas are probably now available. Here we are, security room's key card. Yes, 100%, that's for red. Good. Good, 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 good. So all I've got to do is fix up the lights and kill the rest of the plants, and then you guys will all be on side. This is a cool little area. It's a real shame this didn't make it into the actual launch of the game. Okay, if she wants power restored, then yeah, we pass through the power plant on the way here, far side of the vent. So, okay, hang on. There's one thing in... Hang on, no, I thought there was one thing in each corner. Instead, there's, there's just two things. Now... All of them seem to be inactive to me, but presumably one of these guys has got to be, yeah, supposedly not working. Let's just start turning some wheels, investigating some bits and pieces. Officially, this turbine is spinning, even though it doesn't actually seem to be spinning, so okay then. Here we go. Computer that, ah, possibly Vic can't repair. I was assuming Vic could repair that, but... He's giving it a go. You can't repair that. Okay. Hang on. It's got to be in here somewhere. I'm missing a trick here. Here we go. It's one of these little generators, not the actual turbine. So uh, a circuit board with some damaged pieces is located. Maybe if some junk is found to scavenge through, some replacement parts could be obtained. So uh, what I need is... Uh, yeah, I need to actually find myself some spare parts. Now, there were various lockers and whatever around the turbines, which I think some of which might have had some junk inside. Got it, some junk. I knew I'd seen some junk around here somewhere. Right, so we've now got junk. Do I officially need to use junk on? Because sometimes you need to officially use junk on. Yes, I might need to use junk on thing. So use junk on generator and 500 XP. Oh, that looks better. I have fixed the lights. Beautiful. And actually, while I'm this high up, I may as well go and clear out the rest of the plants for Watts' face. Because I could have sworn I had all of them already, but one of them must have flipping got away from me. Which is quite embarrassing, given they're literally rooted to the ground. There he is. I've got one of them already. Okay, I've done another circuit for safety here. I'm pretty sure that's all of them.
I say as combat begins. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Where was one of you hiding? Oh, that's not even a plant. That's a bloody rat. That doesn't even count. And we have it confirmed the lights are back on in here too. So that should actually make it easier to aim in the event of any more fights. And there we go, 500 XP for clearing out the plans, together with being officially made the assistant groundskeeper, together with a new key for a storage shed. I thought I'd been inside every single building already, but possibly there's one I couldn't get inside, I need to go and double check that. Right, head of PR, you're the big one. And the password is A-B-R-E. Just speak clearly to the door and it will open. Now would everybody please? There we go, marvellous. Right, let's get on our way and start opening some flipping doors. Now I believe the first one was right here, so at this point, try and speak to the door, but with her override, there we flipping go. I've got full access to the facility, beautiful. Okay, nothing inside this room as far as I can tell, there's nothing in the podium I can actually steal, nothing on the ground. Right. Let's start doing another sweep here. Now, need to remember where all the doors were. There was one down in green to access the cannibals and whatnot. I swear there was another one too. What we can say, however, is, yeah, orange has officially been fully explored. That is most definitely sorted out. So, back down over to yellow, and by any chance, now we've actually got, yeah, a whole bunch of power on or something. No, still... Oh, hang on. That's new. Seems you're only able to communicate using binary numbers. Hold on, if I write down what you're saying, I just might be able to figure this out. After a couple of hours, you finally believe you've correctly translated the binary number. It appears he's saying, help me, electrical short. Right, an electrical short in the tape reel. Okay, uh, that looks like a tape reel to me. Vic, would you mind sorting that out, please? So peculiar machine. And... How are you getting on with that? I got it. Faulty machine has been fixed. Okay. Check in with you. And uh, and still not working. Hang on. Let me just sigh for that. Reboot me. You reboot the machine to pass the time you whistle as it chugs for its starting procedures. And... By Hawking, you've done it! My vocal program has been stuck in binary mode for years. Marvellous. So we've got ourselves a new friend. With my supreme intellect in your physical body, we could make quite the duo, you know. Yes, I think you can really see the relationship between this and Old World Blues. The tone is very, very similar. I don't suppose you'd feel comfortable wielding a large experimental gun, would you? Oh, you have no idea how much I'm up for that, yes. In an effort to help the military become more environmentally friendly, I developed a new weapon that requires no ammo as it runs completely on light. I call it the Solar Scorcher, however it's yet to be tested under direct sunlight, which is of course where you come in. Marvellous. So go outside, find something to kill with the Solar Scorcher, come back and report to you. Okay, you could have told me to do that before I just went and took care of the plants, but whatever. In the locker on the wall over there, next to the projector, there's the passcode. Marvellous. I will go out and take care of that for you momentarily. Oh, there it is, the Solar Scorcher. Flippin' love it. Right, let's see how good this thing actually is. So, uh, compared to this, damage. That's not bad. Damage range of 20 to 60. Range of 20, bit on the short side. So yeah, inferior to the turbo plasma rifle, but certainly advantageous insofar as it needs no ammunition whatsoever. And actually, AP only three. Aim shot of four, doesn't come with a burst, and obviously doesn't need to reload, ever, but can only be used outside, presumably. Right, that's cool. I'm gonna tell you ahead of time, Doctor, this thing's gonna do pretty well, actually. But yeah, sadly, I can't just go down to green and murder the folks there with it, because yeah, it needs to be outside. While I'm actually in this lift shaft, though, yeah, down over here in Indigo. So, I think the only door that was actually locked here was, yeah, leading into that area down there. I've already been into there. I've been into the control room. I've seen the tanks over there. I've been into that area. Yeah, it was just this one area down over here. So, let's actually clear out this lift shaft before we actually go and find some more stuff to murder. So, some form of medical facility in here that we're now allowed to access. Hello over there, little computer. What have we got? Welcome to the top secret research and development terminal. Yes, search for things that are important. Yes, that seems like the sort of thing. Important things are great. 
So, virus-laden fruit flies. Right, we've seen about those guys already. So the mutant fruit flies are now successfully carrying the virus. However, before we unleash them on foreign soil, it's been decided we should first expose the fruit flies to a small, isolated American community where we can monitor the effects outside of a lab environment. The civilian casualties that are likely to result are an unfortunate yet necessary sacrifice. Besides, any true American would be honoured to give up their life for the good of our great nation. Right, so typically monstrous stuff there, marvellous. FEV history log as well. As tensions continued to mount between the US and China, a fear at the forefront of the minds of our military officials was that Chinese would deploy biological weapons against American troops. As a result, West Tech, a major high-tech defense contractor, was hired to develop a counteragent. And this led to West Tech, yep, we know about all of this already. This is well-known Fallout lore. I believe all of this was actually in Fallout 1 as well. Anything new here? Yeah, just re-recording the events of Mariposa as were recorded in Fallout 1. So, uh, yeah, they discovered the FEV, they started using it on animals, and then soon afterwards, prisoners in Mariposa. Nothing else particularly interesting there aside from a bit of flavour, but if I just keep searching, still find nothing of interest. Eventually, if I keep clicking on this... Oh, hang on, there was a different message there. What was that? Okay, the game's definitely... Maybe one more search. There we go! After much painful searching, you come across a hidden file. Marvellous. Tell me about the mass fluoridation project. In a continued effort to make the citizens of the United States more controllable, the inclusion of sodium fluoride in all available drinking water is effective immediately. Long-term effects and testing has resulted in subjects becoming more stupid and docile. In addition, it was observed that sodium fluoride caused slight damage to a specific part of the brain, making it more difficult for the person affected to defend his freedom and causing the individual to become more docile towards authority. Marvellous, and I get 200 XP for that. Right, down over here to the medical wing. Just check the lockers around here, make sure there's nothing interesting going on. Ooh, but hello. This autodoc's a special one, perform experimental appearance modification. Okay. Is this bloody chance a way for me to, like, re-roll my character or something? The machine addresses you as you approach. Welcome, test subject. Thank you for volunteering your flesh for science. Please step inside and we can begin. Okay. Um, why don't you tell me what you do and I'll make an informed choice from there. I'm the newest prototype of Autodoc technology developed by Dr. Wood. Ah, this was mentioned on that terminal. So Dr. Wood was doing experimentation into gender modification. So this might be a way of gender flipping your character if you want to do that for whatever reason. Now, do all of them do the same or are they actually all different in some way? It appears to be, yeah, basically the same as far as I can tell. Marvellous. Right, I've dropped a save because... I want to see what this thing actually does, but you know, there's an off chance it being an auto dock in Fallout, it will just straight up kill me. So, go on then, I'm going to, aha, there we go. So yeah, this is a way of basically re-rolling your character if you to want to. So I can get rid of my red hair that you can't actually see because I'm wearing power armour, and change my hairstyle to regular or blonde, or alternatively flip myself to male. But I think I'm pretty happy with my character as it is, so we're just going to leave things as they are. Marvellous. But yeah, that's cool that you can do that if you want to down here. Okay, back outside, and first things first, Jao was given a set of keys. Now, what are those open? Because that's been opened, that's been opened, the greenhouse over here's been opened. What precisely are these things for? Ah, but here's good news, there's a rat up here. I don't need to actually leave the facility to test this old girl out. Marvellous. Hello, Mr. Ratty. How about we just shoot you with this solar cannon? And I feel like I should have missed, but no. I definitely hit it, and... No, it does need to reload. It's just free. Gotcha. Well, that seemed to do the job. I mean, it murdered something. Did 30 points of damage. That's not bad at all. Now, the game is saying that has been successfully tested. So I'm guessing we can nip back to Watts' face now. Also, I didn't notice before, this thing only needs a strength requirement of three, which is very, very low indeed, and only weighs five pounds. That's actually really, really damn light. Like, the plasma rifle is... That's 19. That's not bad at all. This is a cool little doohickey. Right, back to the hologram. Let's have a chat to the director of science, and it did indeed scorch the hell out of things. Yes. Thank you for assisting me with this. Why don't you go ahead and keep it? I'd rather it get some use than sit around here and collect dust. Well, you're very welcome indeed. 500 XP for that. Marvellous. 
Anything else you need me to do? And uh, nope, he's got his own projects to get on with. Lovely. Right, in that case, I think I'm definitely done with this lift shaft. Let's get back over to the other, because now I've got myself a whole bunch of new key cards and passwords. Okay, first up, let's get back down to green. Because, yeah, down in green, we've already explored mostly already. We just need to open a couple more doors and access a little secret cave at the back here. So we now know how to get this old girl open. Marvelous. And yellow force fields typically means, that, yeah, if you use repair, you can just get rid of those immediately. Though I might be able to just turn them off right now. So, uh, information. Here you can see plant life unlike any you've seen before. This exciting new species, derived from the Venus flytrap, was specifically engineered by our brilliant scientists to be able to survive in a world devastated by nuclear war. Why do we want to do that? Well, it's simple. After a global nuclear war, scientists believe that much of the Earth will be a barren wasteland. Plant life will have a difficult time surviving in this harsh new environment. Now imagine us emerging from the safety of our vault tech vault, only to find that all the plants are dead. That'd be no more salads for mom, and no more lawns for Billy and Rover to play fetch on. Oh dear, that would be a disaster. Though I'm not sure how giant carnivorous plants helps us with this. Yeah, the terminal doesn't really seem to know either. It just seems to be scientists being dicks because it's a Fallout game. Now, let's see if we can just actually do a quick repair against the force field. Just to get it deactivated. You can't repair that. Normally you can repair that. Sorry, do you want me to repair like this thing instead? Welcome to the petting zoo. Here you'll have the pleasure of interacting with these unique creatures that look like hideously deformed humans. That's because these ugly beasts are the result of exciting experiments where our brilliant scientists are attempting to splice human and animal DNA. Right, is that actually what these guys are? Or have they like eaten whatever that is? In theory, this new science might one day allow us to create a super person. Imagine a US soldier with the sight of an eagle, the speed of a cheetah, and the strength of an ape. Imagine how the super soldier would strike fear into the hearts of the commies. It sounds like science fiction, but it might soon be science fact. The creatures you see here are the results of experiments that haven't quite met with success. Instead of euthanizing these failed abominations, we thought it would be fun to put them into a petting zoo. Don't worry, despite their horrific appearance, they're not likely to attack as long as they're well fed. We're happy to report that only three visitor casualties have occurred in the past year. Marvellous. So I don't see a way to actually, yeah, hack the force fields. So hang on, back into the terminal here. Yeah, employee access. So lower the force field, please. And I've got the password, so that's fine. And I'm guessing you guys are about to go mad and attack me. We're going to go mad and attack each other? Yes, we're going to go mad and attack each other. Unfortunately, you're actually only armed with, yeah, your own fists. So this ain't going to go well for you. And... Okay, you managed to miss 95% at point blank range. You bloody idiots. Oh, good work right there, Marcus. Two for the price of flipping one. Love it. Right, anyone else remaining? Yeah, I think there's... Hang on. Is he part of my team? No, I think there's someone else in here who's not part of my team. Yep, he's definitely not part of my team. Uh, but the chance of him doing any damage is extremely low. And I've gained five karma for euthanizing those half-human monstrosities. Great. Right, next up, everybody into the plant room, please. And yep, the plants are going to start attacking me. Marcus, please don't flipping kill me. I'm going to be very annoyed if you kill me by shooting me with a minigun right now. Okay, plants dead. Done some quick stim packs and healing over here. Now we've still got one. Hang on. Is there a terminal that's like hidden behind the wall? Because uh, we do need to actually get in here at some point to deal with the Wanamingo and see what's in that cave. Ah, there it is. You can just see it through the window. Marvellous. So what was supposed to be in here originally? Ah, it's supposed to be Wanamingos. Except actually, yeah, confirmation, these guys were specifically designed by the US. But for what purpose precisely? Well, I'm guessing to unleash on the Chinese, because everything in this cocky universe was created to be unleashed upon the Chinese. Right, that goes down. In we go. Hello over there, Mr. Wanamingo. Let's start taking you down. Last time we ran into you, you were quite on the tricky side. But these days, uh, I'm guessing not so much. Yeah, 160 hit points. I'm not so worried by that, actually. We're going to be A-OK. -okay. Though Marcus appears to have run out of ammo for everything. So uh, I should probably give him that 
big rifle that's a big gun that me and Vic can't effectively use. Because if he's using miniguns, that means logically, yeah, he can actually use any big rifle. That'd probably be pretty damn good. Will you stop sucking so much? We've even turned the lights on for you, specially. And Sulik just runs in and absolutely flipping destroys it. Also, the game's still calling it a tough alien, even though we've seen them before, previously referred to them as Wanamingos, and specifically just read a description telling us, no, they're not aliens, but whatever. Now, there is a Wanamingo egg right here, which officially I... Oh, hang on. No, that's just the various spore things. Right. I can try and speak to it. Doesn't seem to be working that well. Can I get over here? No. There's no way to get into that hole that's officially... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Back off, back off, back off. No, it's officially just wall. Right, so uh, they escaped through here. We don't know where to. I'm guessing they're going to be down in blue. Right, speaking of which, let's go find blue. Here we go. Let's start off with red here. Now we know how to open up all of the doors, and it's not with the password. On this occasion, it's with, uh, yeah, this nice thing right here. Security room's key card. So I wanted to use that on door... Not sure if that's going to be the case or not. So let's actually just go and test that right now. Now I'm actually holding it in my inventory. Is that good enough? Will it actually, like, you know, detect Tommy or something? And unauthorized access, locking door. No, 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 no. This is not unauthorized. I think you'll find, actually, I've got the right flipping card. Right, so we need to actually use that on the door. Right, one more hologram to speak to. And uh, hello, dzz, ah, dzz, stand me. Okay, right, you don't seem to be doing very well. Too much static. Let's see if maybe we can fix it, because we know this is a hologram projector. Vic, would you mind trying to fix this thing and stop blocking Vic so he can't get to it, please? Uh, there we go. And Are you guys still blocking Vic? Let Vic get through to the thing. Uh, you can't repair that. Okay, that was the most logical thing to try and repair. Let's try a terminal instead, see if we can run a diagnostics program. That's just a normal computer, can't interact with that at all. Okay, right, so keep having a little bit of a look-see, just a basic projector. Okay, any more information you can give me? My sensor fixed. Okay, so I feel like we are barking up the right tree here. The question is, how do I fix it? Ah, there we go. It was the red blinky one next to the thing that's the projector for some reason. Right, Mr. Static, what can we get from you now? And this guy seems to be basically just, yeah, a bit of a tour guide and also helpful AI who does, like, mathematical calculations for the scientists or whatever. Bit of an all-purpose general assistant to the facility. Right, let's see if he can actually help me out with anything and... Aha! The blue level! Yes! And the blue level contains top secret research. Access to that level is restricted to... Oh, to hell with it! You were kind enough to repair me. Here's the password. It's flower pots. That's wonderful. Right, time to start cracking open some doors and investigating some lockers. But now we're actually behind a locked door. Presumably, these doors will all be... Yeah, these doors are now just all open by default. Lovely. Something to potentially pay attention to. Yeah, they're throwing pulse grenades at me in this area. Okay, we might need to fight some robots yet. Just in case, keep them on me. Right, nothing else on this side of the level. In which case, what does this do? Aha! Okay, problem with this elevator. I'm guessing this might have originally been how you were supposed to get down to blue level in, like, the original architecture. But as it's broken, we need to go down that ladder in violet instead. Gotcha. Oh, now we're getting into the good stuff. Yeah, here we flipping go. Right, so we've got ourselves a 9mm and 9mm ball. Then we've got needler cartridges. 762, but 2mm electromagnetic cartridges. Now, that's what I need for the best gun in the world that I stumbled across a while ago. Yes, yes it is. So finally, we've got some of them. Beautiful. Here we go, that spectacular little pistol. So, uh, this thing has actually got itself, yeah, the ammunition it needs now. Okay, bear in mind, at this point, I have got some really, really damn good guns uh, if I come across a really hard fight. Also, I've got an electronic lockpick mark too. Okay, that seems pretty darn badass. Not sure what I need that for at this point, but I'll take it along with me because that sounds good. 
and maybe don't take explosives. But remember that's there because that might mean, hey, you need to blow something up in a minute. Right, big boardroom with nothing on it as far as I can tell. Then we've got, yeah, the execution room, nothing going on in there. And then a cute little museum. Everybody loves a cute little museum. And there's an EPA pamphlet inside the museum in the desk right here. Right, what's this? Nothing out of the ordinary. This is very much out of the ordinary. This is very different and cool. I've never seen anything like this in Fallout before. It's awesome. It's a war room table officially. But sadly, I can't actually use it for anything. Boo. Boo, I say. Ooh, but I can make it play a movie that gives an entertaining and informative look at the scary but possible reality of the post-nuclear world. Oh yes, every time. Hello, I'm Dr. Caleb and I'll be hosting this holographic video on post-Holocaust America. Meet the Johnsons. They're your average American family. Dad smokes his pipe, mom reads her cookbook, and little Billy and Susie catch some boob tube before bedtime. They think everything will be just fine. They ignore the warning sirens, thinking that it's just another drill. But what's this? I'm guessing it's nukes, because it normally is. Would you believe that what they should have done is go into a vault? This message brought to you by Vault Tech. And best as I can tell, the pamphlet doesn't actually do anything. Hang on, has that actually opened up anything inside my Pip-Boy? And no. No, it has not, sadly. Right, let's go get down to level blue. So, down to level 5 in the elevator on the right. That should bring me down over here to Violet and or Indigo. Then if we just go up to this door, I think this is where we give the password uh, flower pot, I think. Hang on. Flower pot. Yes. And now uh, we have got our way down to... Okay. To where the Wanamingos live. Got it. So we've got some murder to do first. Except, hang on. How do they get up to me? I'm not sure they can actually get up to me right now. So... Just on the off chance they can't, screw it, live and let live. So, yellow force field, we know what to do here. Typically you repair or science a little terminal and uh, fail to disable it. Keep giving it a go, Vic. Keep giving it a go. There we go. He got it off. 70 XP for me as well. Lovely. Right. EPA. What have we got here? And we've got ourselves... Ah! By any chance is this some form of super mutant research facility because it normally flipping is. Also I suspect the Wanamingos may be onto us because I've just got into combat. Yeah, the Wanamingos have figured out how to get up to us, marvellous. It's moments like this that I really wish Marcus had a gun. Luckily, we do have some pretty decent weaponry here and yeah, that burst fire off. I'm sorry, Marcus, did you just try and punch him from 20 hexes away? Well done, you cocky genius. Okay, much time and many dead Wanamingos later. 5,400 XP for wiping out all of them. When I say all of them, there's still like two of them and the Queen dotted about. But screw it, we'll deal with them on the way out if we have to. Let's go check out what's going on upstairs because that's probably the interesting bet. And we've got ourselves a large, rather distinctive looking computer here. Hibernation Chamber Control Computer. Select an option. Subject history. Retrieve a test subject. Oh, blimey. These might not be super mutants. These could be actual, you know, people. Three individuals were sealed within these chambers before the war, each for specific classified reasons. Subjects remain sealed and unaware of their surroundings. Log entries are available for each subject. Right. So we've got subject A, B, or C here, and I'm guessing we have to make a choice, otherwise it wouldn't be making such a big deal of reading the logs ahead of time. So subject A, it's finally happened, they've launched their nukesters and we've launched ours at them. Brass don't go into detail, it's probably already Judgment Day topside by now. Radio communications have been disrupted indefinitely. Right, so subject A is military security, something of that nature. Ah, subject A isn't the person writing, the person writing is describing each of the subjects. So, they brought in a woman to be cryoed, didn't say much, only that it was top secret business. She was quite the looker, petite, Chinese looking, there was something about her eyes. She took down two secret service agents when she found out what they had in mind. Caught them off guard, opened them both up with one of Delnay's scalpels. Jesus Christ, that was a sight for tired eyes. The third one managed to subdue her. It's not like she wouldn't be spending the rest of her life down here if she managed to kill them off anyway. She's unconscious now. They're prepping her tank. 
It's right next to that psychopath Patrick's too. What a shame. Would have liked to have gotten to know her better. Dr. David Kimball, 23rd of October, 2077. Fine, so presumably Chinese spy. Now subject B, who presumably is the psychopath that was just mentioned. Narcissistic, woman-hating, sociopathic murderer, known to occasionally dabble in necrophilia and cannibalism, he is cold-hearted to the extreme, showing no remorse for his victims, who range from innocent children to the elderly and disabled. His preferred targets were attractive young women who he'd usually seduce into intercourse before brutally dispatching them. Right, so a bit of a dick, got it. The only emotional attachment Dex seems to have is for a mid-20th century rock and roll idol whom he admires as a role model, and perhaps even as a father figure. Okay, now, I shouldn't let Dex out, but if they're talking about Elvis Presley, I believe I have several Elvis Presley paintings in the trunk of my car, which could potentially get him to come- No, we're definitely not letting out Dex regardless. And finally, Subject C, so he is military. So Sergeant Christopher Cat Jules was assigned to the EPA military security detail on 17th of February 2074. Prior to this attack to the reconnaissance unit of the 205th Airborne, Sergeant has an impressive combat record and is one of the highest graded energy arms and unarmed combat specialists in his unit. However, these achievements are marred by an equally long history of accusations of petty theft, repeated counts of being out of uniform, and an attitude of extreme arrogance to superior officers. Right. Sergeant Jules was recruited as a test subject for the Human Reflex Enhancement Project on 10th of May 2075, in exchange for the removal of some of these reports from his file. Complications arose from the initial trial, and Sergeant Jules was sedated for the safety of himself and those around him. And I'm guessing given what we saw upstairs, uh, yeah, lengthened canines, eccentric characteristics, improved reflexes, heightened sensory capability, and a slightly reduced attention span, yeah, they actually decided to gene splice him with a cat, didn't they? Right, so that's all we've got, in which case, Time to choose a test subject. Extended periods of time in a deep freeze environment alters the chemical processes of the body. Without proper application of chemicals to the subject's body on exiting the chambers, they may suffer from... Right, okay, hang on, what do I need? So I need an ERSI canister in the dispenser. Right, okay, if that's a chemical, then presumably Mr. Chemi could make that for me. Yeah, that must be the answer, because when you actually go down to blue, the room with Mr. Kemi in it is literally right there. So, come on, Mr. Kemi, what can we do? There we go, the ERSI kit. Right, what do you need for that? And uh, it's your lucky day, he's got the chemicals built in. Marvellous. Okay, back to the computer, and I've made my choice, because I'm going to be honest, I'm tired of travelling around with Marcus already, because... Marcus just sort of weirdly keeps walking around making comments out loud about wedgies and farts. So he's kind of lowering the tone, to be honest, which I find very odd because, you know, he comes across as very intelligent and thoughtful when you actually speak to him. But for some reason, his incidental dialogue is entirely about toilet humour, which I find a bit off-putting. And also, he's a super mutant, so he can't wear armour. So uh, I think he needs to go. And that means what I need is a heavy gun user. And I know for a fact that Sergeant Cat Jules is good at big guns. His report said so. So, uh, yeah, we're actually going to be getting... Uh, placed in the canister, please. Uh, yeah, we're going to be picking up Christopher Cat Jules, who I assume is also a bit of a reference to Red Dwarf, because he's not the only one. There is actually another Red Dwarf random encounter in this game, I believe I ran into earlier. So, uh, yes indeed, uh, it's going to be you, Cat. And there we go, and oh... Um, how's he doing? Is he doing okay? Because I feel like he's not doing so hot, actually. Um, Cat, are we good? Who am I? Why, I'm only Sergeant Jules, the best-looking soldier on this base. Gorgeous. Right, I have picked well. Let's sleep with him if we can. I really need more notches on the bedpost. Ah, yes, also an energy weapons expert. Now, that's useful. I've got a whole bunch of energy weapons I'm not personally using all the time, so... Actually, this guy would be pretty damn good in various interesting roles. Right, so we know what we're doing here. Glasses go on. All those mentats have been fighting around the place. Let's just quickly do that. That gets my charisma up to, yep, six. Marvellous. You Marcus, you just get to live down here now. You just stay here until I come back. 
I'm not coming back, but like, just stay here anyway. Good news, cat. You're coming with me. And there we go. He's part of the team. Now, let's check if he is indeed literally half cat. Yes, human and feline DNA. I was right. Marvelous. Ooh, and better and better, he could actually boost my energy weapons and big weapon skill. That's actually pretty darn useful, yes. Ooh, right now he does only have 80 hit points though. That's a little bit on the low side, but possibly that will actually update the next time I level up, so he'll actually jump up to his next level. Or maybe next time I save, load, go through a transition zone. I get the feeling that's his base hit points. There's definitely more to it than that. But yeah, we know what this guy can do. He's actually a specialist with big and energy weapons. So uh, yeah, we can get him well. It says small guns there. Just a second ago, you were talking about energy weapons, all right. I know you're good at energy weapons, so you bloody well better be. Otherwise, I'm going to regret releasing you. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Brand new team. Cat, however, is going to need, yeah... Armor, weapons, a whole bunch of other stuff. So, it sure is bloody lucky we're heading back to San Francisco next to pick up with the herbologist and the she. Because there's a bunch of good shops there. And, of course, boots and a car. Probably plenty of stuff we can start getting him set up with. So, next time, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get our new energy weapon specialist set up. Head back over to San Francisco and start trying to figure out what's going on with the factions over there. Because, uh, yeah, definitely feels like there's a bit of tension in that part of the world. And of course, we need to do some shopping. Comments did mention there's another really damn good weapon store somewhere in San Francisco. So we most definitely want to go and pay that a little visit. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nut. And this has been Fallout 2. Thank you very much and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got a... I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake! This is gonna take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out- DIE YOU MOVING BASTARDS! DIE! DIE! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.